What's up everybody? So today we are actually going to be doing something different here on the channel. We're going to be doing a Netflix movie review. Uh, this is Travis right here. Hello. And the movie we're actually going to be looking at, we're going to be reviewing and kind of like piecing together or just making an analysis of is uh, Creep and Creep 2 on Netflix. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, there will be spoilers, so turn away, but... We're going to try and keep the first half of the video spoiler free and then we're going to move into spoilers probably at the second half. Uh, there will probably be a timestamp as to when we're going to start talking about spoilers. But uh, this is a found footage film that was released on Netflix about, I'll say a couple years back. 2014 I saw. 2014 was the first one and yeah. then the second one creep to the sequel was 2017 oh, 17. Uh, it might have been 2016 but basically the interesting thing is it has mark duplass in it it has uh oh god what's the other guy's name christopher i don't know if it's christopher price i i feel like i'm gonna i Who feel like mark I price. yeah uh well that's the funny thing about it is that the guy's name is aaron in the, in the first second movie. one yeah you know <laughs> um but ironic. I think it's Patrick Price. I think Patrick Bryce or something like that. That's what his name. Uh, correct me. I'll have to look up and I'll put probably a text of his correct name. But I know his last name something like that. Um, but yeah. Creep 1 and Creep 2. It is about a basically somebody taking a Craigslist ad to commit a crime. Well, what is it? He's taking a Craigslist ad to... Basically, he wants to do a documentary. Do on, a documentary uh, on, on uh, a guy's unborn um, son because the guy has cancer. Right. So he agrees to go down to make some money, and he's all joking about like, "Oh, what's it gonna be like?" Right. You know, thinking like this is this is gonna be an interesting job. You know, what was he making jokes about saying like how uh, something like if it would be a girl or something like that? And like yeah, he was, like he was not taking it seriously. Whatsoever. He was not taking. It. He was this guy. So. Mark uh Mark Duplass's character is um he what's interesting is that by the title of the movie Creep you already know that with this being a found footage type film with somebody taking a uh, a Craigslist job to be a videographer and going down to someone's house you know Craigslist being the kind of site it is it seems like kind of a sketchy site to take a job off exactly, like that, yeah, right yeah. so when you go over here and you get and you put two and two together with a movie Creep you kind of think, okay, there's something that's going to be not going the way it's supposed to. And it's exactly what it is. The guy ends up being a serial killer who is kind of like... Like, you're kind of given the idea that it, the guy is not right in the head. And it, it, even though it's not implied that he's a serial killer so much in the first movie, you already kind of have an idea. That... Can I mention by the end, like, what I thought about, like, with, 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 with the whole collection he had, how it reminded me of Dexter? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he, he was basically, like, um, he had all these victims that mm -hmm. were lined up in, right. like, in those cases, you know, and basically, like, you know, you film this, so, so he had it planned out from the beginning uh -huh. for um, every victim he's had has done the same yeah. thing. So it's kind of like a whole, like, never-ending uh -huh. clockwork of, killing <laughs> i think what's interesting is that we started this review saying that we were not going to get into spoilers until probably like half the video oh, but shit <laughs> i guess we're just gonna go with it because well you said serial killer so i thought that was it it's it that is was spoil enough it so. was spoil it's a it's a spoiler enough uh I, I don't know do you want to start it over or should we just keep going with it let's keep going with it all right so the idea is what actually kind of intrigued me to this movie, because I have watched it twice, and then I brought it to his attention, and then we watched it together, was that what actually intrigued me was I had found a post on a, like a filmmaking blog that was talking about how the movie was shot on a, on a $500 budget, and it was basically the idea is to take a movie, create it from nothing, and kind of, or create something out of nothing, and the way they did it is two members, just two people, you know, filming at like a, a cabin somewhere in the woods, getting ideas, you know, scripting this out. And what was kind of intriguing is that this five hundred million, this five hundred dollar uh, film, film made seven million, basically turned into um, 
over 100 uh, or no 1 million figures. So it's about it's about seven figures is what they uh, what they've earned off of this. So they're able to sell this film to Netflix for well over seven figures, which yeah. I thought that was pretty impressive. So it's like, okay, I have to check out this film and I have to really, you know, see what I think about it. And I was going in it kind of expecting it to be more of a thriller. Like, I don't know if that's what you were kind of thinking, like, when you watched it. But I was kind of thinking, like, okay, you're thinking paranormal activity. Yeah, it's just going to build up, and then something's going to happen. But the way they portray this movie is more of, like, real day life. Like, it's just fun and games with some hint of, like, mm -hmm. unnerving, like, you know. It's feeling. almost like just a regular, kind of like a regular film documentary. Um, and in, in the found footage type, you know style yeah. of filmmaking and it's kind of almost more of a comedy movie if anything it is it's like dark comedy probably. it's like dark comedy not even really like a thriller but what's interesting is in the first movie um mark Duplass's character who goes by the name of joseph in the movie yeah is like a um you don't know when he's telling the, the truth, truth. Yeah. you don't know when he's lying he's he's, he's very like empathetic in a way that you can believe you don't know if you can believe him or not but you turn towards believing him because he has this like sympathy you really want to care for him for like right, right he tries to convince you like oh it's because of these problems i'm sorry it's not my fault and all this stuff like that so the guy's like oh i feel bad for this guy and he's dealing with this he's probably just like mental issues so you know mm -hmm. i'm gonna go help him and do what he wants to do and I think that's where it gets interesting because what, when you think about it, this guy, at their, uh, even in the beginning of the movie, even in the beginning of the first one, the minute that he starts going into the freaking bathtub and like see submerging himself in freaking water, that's that that that's that's when I would be like, okay, this is very weird. That's a red flag. I'd be like, okay, he wants the film taking a bath. How does this have any relevance to like the unborn unborn child? But then he tries to convince you by saying. Oh, he wants to make it his first tubby or like bath time to show like what it would be like as oh a kid. So he tries to like twist it in like a way that it's like it's a good meaning instead of being weird. So he kind of like has these weird ways of manipulating the actual actions of why he's doing things. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of why I think this movie works. It's like I was it was it's I mean, it's very believable. It's very believable. It's all with a found footage like this where you don't have a huge crew and you don't have like a huge, you know, budget to go off of. You have to go off the acting. You have to go off of the, it's the all fact acting. That they're acting the improv and uh, just the just the awkwardness that these two characters, Aaron and Joseph at the time are kind of going through. And, you know, what's interesting is like you're kind of not sure when he's telling the truth because as the movie goes on it progressively gets weirder and weirder well the reason why i feel like it's weirder is because they have this thing where he starts out as friends like he oh, doesn't yeah. make a friend and be like oh that's cool you know he's being nice just fun to film the video with them he's all splashing around the water whatever he's doing and then uh as it goes on he becomes from friend to like lover in a way that's like he want he wants him to be with them, marry Ugh. him, whatever. And it's it's actually not what he wants. It's more like twisted and sicker. He wants him to be like his <clears throat> love that he kills and is like important to him. Like you were the best one, blah blah and stuff like that. So like he he like makes this fantasy of like someone uh, falling for him, mm -hmm. and then even though they're like reluctant and like no no no, and then but the, when they go through with it, they, he he realizes oh. You know, they did all this for me, and they're the best because they did this. Even though they didn't want to, they still had, like, faith in me that I wouldn't kill them. Right. And it's like, it, it, It's so weird. Like, when they go out in the forest and how they're bringing up those subtle hints of, like, um, where you start the heart, asking... The heart scene? The heart scene. Oh, <laughs> my God. Don't even get me started. So, like... The heart scene, it's interesting because some of this stuff, you don't know if they, like, initially planned or if it was part of, the like, just their improv and they managed to pull it off together. But, I mean, I imagine there was some prep. I imagine, like, when you think of behind the scenes of a movie like this, you have to understand there's there's some prep that goes into it. I'm sure they but, didn't but, just go, you know, like... When you scout locations, yeah, you can find a heart there, but maybe, you never know, they could have just been filming and then they saw that. Because Dude. that happens in movies, but I that'd be really 
interesting if that happened. If that really happened, that really yeah. happened because it would have felt like it fitted the, it the fit. actual movie. So <laughs> what we're what we were kind of uh, what we were, we're kind of bringing up is there's a point where they're going out in the forest to kind of like just talk and mingle and you know hear Aaron or jo I mean Joseph wants to kind of uh, basically kind of he wants to show him something that's in the in the woods and he's kind of wants to get him like what, what what is it that he said that was in the in the woods that oh was it was like special or something or something like special spiritual or something, something like, like that. some sort of spiritual kind of thing that he wants like, to get you him have to. to see this blah 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 it's amazing and everything like that and, and he's then he goes basically coursing him into the woods and they run across this like uh is it like this waterfall or is it like this sort of like area where it's like completely beautiful, and then there's like a cut out heart, yeah, or a heart shape, in like a hole of a. I don't know if it's like a stone, or if it's like a rock, or something like that, or you know, a ledge. But it's like a heart shape, and it's one of those moments where, like, throughout their conversations, they're going to the woods. They're asking like uh, he's asking questions where it should set anybody off who's following yeah, this guy. Exactly. Into the woods. Like he's like, so did you see that? Uh, did you see that? Uh, you saw that axe back there, right? Where um, at that back guy house? <laughs> yeah. Did you think that at any point that I would kill you with it? It's like that. Those kind of questions, you know. It's like. But th but then he takes that that line and the, how the Tony said it and just changes like a joke. And you think like, oh, he's just so being funny and stuff because mm -hmm. his character can change so drastically in a second that you can't tell if he's actually genuine about this or if he's actually lying to you like he wants to kill you right because his his character is so unpredictable it, yeah in, in, in a good way it's a in very a interesting like that's what makes the film really great because you're on your edge of your seat you're like is he gonna do this is he actually does he actually care this one about him even if he even if he has a plan of killing him did he actually feel emotion or sympathy for aaron at all during certain scenes or was it all just a lie and he was just making it up like he cared and whatever and right and then even the movie even has these weird moments where he's like, uh, there even narrows, um, and I, I think what's interesting is the symbolism and the type of, you know, um, the foreshadowing that is done with the yes. objects. Yes. Like, for instance, you have that, that wolf mask that he wears. Yep. It's, uh, oh, I forgot the name. Peach Fuzz? Peach Fuzz. <laughs> he puts the freaking mask on. But he explains it as such He's, an innocent story. It, it's like a, it's some innocent story. He doesn't like make it where it's like, oh, you think that this is a kind of bad thing. And it, it kind of makes you think like, okay, in a believable sense, if somebody were to go down to a some guy's house and he's telling you these lies, at what point are you willing to leave? And if would you is it believable enough that you would be manipulated to fall to keep going? Because there's multiple times in the movie where he says, even in the beginning, he's like, you can leave, you can take yeah. your money and yeah. freaking leave, yeah. and, and he stays. No, he, I know, but what, I, what I'm wondering is when he actually decides to leave and he doesn't have his keys, what led up to him deciding to do that? Because before he could have left, before he even had the chance to get the keys. Oh, yeah. I know, right? There was some sort of... Uh, I think it was a hug, right? He took out his pocket or something? I think he, he must have grabbed it out of his pocket. That's kind of where I was going about it. But yeah, I would say that just the dynamic, the humor in these characters is what kind of just sells the whole thing. And, yeah. you know, it, being a found footage film, you can't really expect, like, there's going to be the, like, obviously the uh, the lighting isn't going to be, you know, it's not going to be set up like if it's a professional type movie. Well, that makes it but more... that was the whole that, point. That makes it more interesting because it feels more real. It doesn't it does. feel like it's just like we're setting up this horror movie and things are going to get crazier. You get this sense of, holy shit, this is really uncomfortable because this is normally like just a normal setting and it's like a normal evening, yet it feels creepy and it makes it worse in terms of feeling because it's like a normal setting. And when you see things that are normal but they feel weird it's worse than being in a evil bad environment because you're already expecting and you're feeling right. that so you're feeling like eerie like oh god this is really weird he's just in this house and the lighting's normal and there's nothing that shows this um sense of fear or like disturbance like like with lighting but like mm -hmm. you feel that when you're actually watching it normally right and um even when even when you get up to like the final moments in the movie where the plot kind of thickens, and he starts sending those DVDs to his house. Uh, oh, oh, really quick, the foreshadowing with the heart. The foreshadowing. Because the, ne the necklace. 
the neck neck that was that was also interesting because he, when he, when he was talking about like the friendship and like being close with the heart that was leading up to um how he was sending him a uh a like a necklace charm necklace with um pictures of him and Aaron mm-hmm. and Aaron's like what the fuck like what's going on this is really weird and that's after he throws throws away the DVD so I think now he should be like okay this is weird you know I gotta I gotta board my house up which he does. And he asked the police, he's like, oh, you know, this guy is after me, blah, blah, stalker. And he said he, he didn't say, he didn't confirm saying for sure, because I think he felt sympathy for Joseph, wasn't actually sure he could have been. But I would have been like, hey, you guys can get over here. I'm going to get killed. You know, like, this is crazy. Like, my, yeah. my garbage was knocked down. Um, he, he was probably here or something like that, you know. Like, I think that is kind of the only thing that you can kind of you can kind of criticize a little bit when it comes to any sort of like any movie in in horror movies but uh in general when characters seem kind of like where they would choose the dumb move over the smart one like when you when you call someone up on the phone and says you're being stalked it's like you have to make it seem serious and it was weird is the cops on the phone didn't, like even though you couldn't hear them it was almost like they didn't take it seriously. Yeah. But I think what's interesting is the reason that they they can get away with that a little bit is because of the balance of uh, of how manipulative uh, but, Joseph was. Yeah, and the question I have is with that last video he did where he was like being so like I'm telling you the truth and everything like that after all those things that happened like previous nights, you know, like the sending the the things and all that stuff wouldn't that trigger something like, hey, this is a little off? Or because he was so manip- manipulative and um, convincing to the whole movie to him, he was so, like, mind-fucked. He didn't know what to believe. He was mm-hmm. like, do I go with this because he's actually being genuine or do I not? And he took that risk. If I was the person, I would have said, nah, I'm not going. You <laughs> I, know? I, think, so, I think, obviously, anybody in the smart mind would do that. But what was weird, it was like... But the thing is, he was with him for so long but we could sit watching the movie, we wouldn't, but we wouldn't know how we feel being with that person. You never know how you'd sway our minds. I don't because know if people it was like... are brainwashed all the time nowadays, you know? Oh, yeah. It, it, it could, could be it like could, Stockholm could, Syndrome. Cold, whatever. Like yeah, exactly. So it's like he could have had, like, the character could have, like, traumatic events in the past, Aaron or whatever. Mm-hmm. And this could have, like, made him think certain things and relate, like, oh, I understand why he's feeling that way as I did. So he does that, and his rational mind goes out the window because he's thinking of, like, like, oh, maybe this guy isn't so bad after yeah. all. And then it comes to that final moment in the movie, which you guys have to watch it, but it's like, ah, and it's like, it's like, you don't know, like, oh man, what'd you get yourself the into? The scene, the, the, the cinematography, the way it was filmed, it was just, it was brilliant. I felt like, um, I was just, <laughs> just like, sh- not, not shocked, but like, wow, that was really impactful. I can't believe, uh, that scene was done that way. Very, very, very interesting use of um editing and um how they uh kept the mood the tone of that scene yeah so, especially yeah, yeah. with the editing being the fact that there's moments in the film where they have the camera pointing at the screen and you're almost sure you're watching the video yeah that's on the screen but in reality you're actually watching it through the viewfinder of the camera yep um but where it get where i think everything kind of elaborates in further and it, it, the plot thickens in kind of the backstory forms about exactly what the whole Craigslist said, I would have to say goes to the second movie. So yeah. Creep 2 was the sequel that they released two years ago, two years two later. Years ago. Yeah, later. Um, and the, um, the actress that they chose to play the character was pretty spot on. I don't even remember her name, unfortunately. I know. Sarah in the movie, I Sarah think? Sarah in the movie, but I don't remember her actual, her actual real name, but... I don't either. I don't know. But what was interesting about the second movie is that with the second movie, it was like, it was very, it was very, like, right in your face, because with you finishing off the first movie, having the idea that you know who the killer is. How do you make a sequel without it being feeling the like a rehash thing. of the say of, the, of yes. the first movie? And the way they did that, sorry, let me cut you off. Yeah, no, go ahead. But it was the gender roles. They switched to a girl, so it shows how um, how much more vulnerable she could be compared to a guy. 
and she's more of a desperate, I need footage so I can get paid and live and stuff because I'm, I'm like, I'm trying all these videos. So I'm not getting any views and I'm trying to start all these sites and shows and she's getting nothing. So she gets opportunity and she's like, oh, this is really, it's interesting. He wants me to go down there. What was it for, what was he, what was the reason for, for pictures? She was going down there for, uh, she was doing a web series called Encounters on the internet. But he didn't know that. No, he things. didn't know that So, so. So what was the reason that guy asked her to go there for? Ever go to was? Uh, that was I believe I remember the uh, the original the original idea was he was he wanted to film a documentary about his life and he was that's right that's he right. was talking about like um if you're a fan of like the the interview with a vampire or uh, I forgot what else he said but it was it was like so cheesy in his message. And then when they start texting and mingling over the text message, it's like, it, it, it's it's so funny because she, uh, everything kind of falls into place where it's like, she her liked, name is Sarah, and it, he has this favorite song that's named Sarah. It's like... He planned it all oh along, my God. you know, and he made it... I don't think he planned it all along. I think it's just, it works out happened in his, to be. It just happened to be in his favor where it's like, oh man. Oh, he can girl's... work towards it, yeah. Use that. But the one thing I do need to bring up is the fact that she was not your damsel in distress. She was not like she was not that like vulnerable. She she was very strong and she, she had opportunities to leave at multiple times. But what was weird is they do they change it where the the person well as the Aaron uh from the first movie is more scared and kind of wants you know he's uncomfortable at it. And she's this girl, not even she's freaking, comfortable. She's not even like flinching at all. He's eye. trying to mess with her, like like I'm gonna kill you kind of ways. Like he's gonna sneak up, but she sneaks up on him and scares him. And he's just like, what the hell? This is not how I'm supposed to go. Like I should be the one. But what's really funny is that he literally in the in the end of the with the first movie you find out in the end he's a serial killer. In this movie he straight up tells her, I'm a serial killer. Blah blah. I want to make a movie about it. I think and that's like, where... And it's, it's either, do you, does she actually believe that? Or does she go on with it because she's like, I really want to risk it. Is it going to be good, good footage for the Encounter show, you know? Yeah. Or does she just... And you can't tell because when, when further on in the movie, it looks like she's getting attracted to him. So you can't really tell if he's like, he actually cares about the guy also. and But also or but then you can't tell if it's just just for the Encounters. Because it's so her, her acting is so convincing that you can't... Real, it can't um, distinguish between the two. Like, is she actually liking him and trying to help him out, or is it just for the show, or is it both? It's like she's got her own motives, which I think is great because uh, there's a motive for her to stay. As in the first one with Aaron, it was not so much that his motive was kind of thrown out the window halfway in the movie, where it's like he was he had a reason to leave. So. What it was is that she was, uh, she, you're not sure if she was, you know, if she knew exactly, you know, if he was a killer or not. But what's really weird about this is the killer, the serial killer, Joseph from the first movie, is actually named Aaron in the second the movie. movie. How he takes over, yeah. So it, what it, what's interesting about it is like... He would, adapts the role he of He adapts the, the role of the victim of the previous movie, changes his name to Aaron, and it's like... It's like he rid himself from his old identity. He and really, it's like yeah. starting fresh in yeah. a way. I'm just like... But I feel like this one, in a, in a sense, it was so much Maybe, better than the first. Too. I agree too. And the one thing I was going to say is that I realized that he could have named himself Aaron because later in the movie you find out he actually <laughs> wants to be the one that gets killed. Like he, she wa he wants her to kill him. And I think... That's just because he's done with it. I, I actually thought you can't. Well, I mean, you can't really tell if he actually wanted to die. But there's so many opportunities she could just kill him. Like little when she lays his head down with the axe. Oh like, God! He, if, if if she killed him, she killed him. He, he can't think like, oh, she's not gonna do it. Like he knows she's not, unless he's like that good at like seeing a person. You know? Because I think like, I think in the back of his mind, he knew that she wasn't gonna kill him. I I think so. But was the actual plan him wanting to die that? night? I, because I, he seemed like he wanted to, and then he was like, "Oh, you gotta kill yourself too, like this." And then it's like, "No, I'm not doing that shit." So she like, "I don't runs know. Off. I I don't know. I mean, I think so. I think that was the original intent, and then all of a sudden, when she kind of just changed her mind out of that second, I think it was sort of like they were kind of uh, almost like the chemistry between those two is like they were they kind of just 
battling, butting heads with how they were react, they were reacting to each other, and it was it's interesting. It how- was like it was like a fight between them, but also in like a sexual like lovers kind of way. Like domestic, like you know, right? Because when she goes to the hot tub and like massages him and stuff like that, she didn't have to do that. No, no, she didn't have to do that at she, all. She did for the video. I don't know. Like, is that do you really have to add that into like, the encounters? Video? Does that make a difference, or was that something that had to be needed, or did she do actually cared and she's like sympathy? Like sympathy. I, I have no freaking clue because that that she admitted like that was the interesting thing about it. She said. So the way they threw it out your face about him being the killer in this whole movie was like you you knew that he was already a killer, but what, what made it interesting is that you didn't know whether she believed it or not, and based yeah, off exactly. because of how manipulative he was. And then when she uh, when he asked her a question about do you believe that I'm a killer. She, she kind says, of like says no. no, so it's like you don't know if she's lying, lying or, or not. Yeah, telling the, she the truth. It, yeah, it's it's interesting that way. That's what the creep movies are like. They're so unpredictable in terms of what's gonna happen, how the characters are thinking. That's what makes it really good. Mm-hmm. On a low budget, it's like one place. You know, it could have been a disaster if it was done wrong, but they managed mm-hmm. to do it in such a great way that it was so intriguing all the way through. Mm-hmm. Um, it provided like surprises all the way through the movies, and it's right. just. It's it's a great formula. I don't know if they can make a creep three, but if they could, they they could kind of take the same style, and, like tweak it a bit, like with the girl, like to have a different like a take on it. I but, feel um, like they're gonna have to do that because I mean I I don't want to get into too much of the ending of the of the second one, yeah. but from what I will say that it, the way that they ended the second one, it feels like the third one is gonna be a challenge to make uh, based off how they ended it. Yeah. Uh, because with uh, with movies such as Paranormal Activity uh, or any found footage film or any horror film in general where it's like you have practically the same movie in each of the sequels, it seems like they definitely don't want to do that here. No, no, for sure. Um, because, like, you've seen how many Paranormal Activities have they been and how much have how many of them kind of fallen off probably the like wheel. i don't know probably seven now and there's a video seven. game now of it it's just oh, becoming god, there's a, a video huge, game now just for vr yeah oh my god oh and it's like god. you expect the same thing you know when you see creep you expect it to be like okay this is where it's gonna be a scary movie or different you know it could be like you know just some guy who's making girls feel uncomfortable or just a dude who's just like creepy but you don't think of like what kind of character he is, like how crazy he can be and right. manipulative and how he's like a serial killer and stuff like that. Like you can sense he's probably a killer, but at the same time, you don't know how bad it is. He could have just been someone who's just like, <clears throat> was this is like his first kill or second kill. Like he's just, <clears throat> he's just lost because in mm-hmm. the movie they make it seem like the sister makes it seem like he's in a bad place, which <clears throat> also makes probably Aaron think in the first movie that he, um, he's, he actually can, sympathize with him because he's like oh maybe he's just lost and struggling Mm -hmm. and i can help him out and everything yeah so the video is going on 25 minutes uh i feel like we could probably end it here there's more than enough information there's more than enough analysis to just share about these characters and how like with a movie like this where the acting is so dynamic between the characters it's like it's interesting to kind of give a full review on it without getting too heavy into the yeah, whole Yeah, we don't want to put too much spoilers. spoilers. We said a lot. We, of ma- said we covered too main much. points. Yeah, we said too much. But the thing is, you just have to see it unravel and there are some things we haven't said, which is good. So yeah. there's still more surprise which shows how great this movie is because it has so many different things. But um, the one thing I learned from this movie too, and I've, I've learned in the past, but to make a great movie, it's not just having a large but high budget having like all you know amazing actors or you know like just a lot of money and production values it's about creating what you want with limited sources so try to make something that is is like like something great that you've thought of that's not like really like unrealistic in Mm -hmm. terms of expectations but try to do something that's that simple but effective and try to make the simpleness Mm -hmm. become more um impactful by the way you do the camera angles or the directing or the acting to make a different tweak so it you can kind of a bit so you, can, story. so you can stand out and make it your own way right. because I've learned that making stuff from like a starting originality is basically impossible they've done everything so basically you're going to have to um, create something that's been done like use that and then tweak it in your own way 
Yeah. And if you can make it in your own personal experiences or things you've thought of, you can actually make it slightly more interesting and original because if you just go all at original, it's not going to work out because it'll just be a carbon copy. I, I don't even know if you can do that because like you can kind of tell when people are going to copy it. But anyway, yeah, uh, that you guys will have to go see it on Netflix for sure. Um, it's both of the movies on there. I, I, I wonder if they can't wait to see if they do a third one. But I think we're going to end the video here. I don't really want to give a actual score as to say it's like 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10. Yeah. But if we had to say a score of this movie. What do you think? What my I would say it is definitely in nine. Definitely say it's an eight to a, eight, a, eight, eight to a nine. nine. Eight to the nine. Just, just because of what they were able to do is very impressive just, with what they had. Yeah. and how, how effective it was. I with think just that. I think that the I think the way that the movie was shot, you have to kind of play around with a score like that, and you know you have to understand. There were moments it's kind of slow. You have to wait for it to build up. So there's points like. But it's meant for the movie because right. it's, it once once it happened, it was for something. It wasn't for nothing. Like, right. It was planned to become something in the future. So let's say you have eight or nine. I would recommend go checking it out if you're into found footage, horror, thriller, or comedy in this sense. Very original. Very original. A take on the whole genre, considering fun, the yeah. genre is very much uh, hard to get around with its limitations. Yeah. So I'm going to end the video here. If you guys actually enjoyed these kind of videos and discussions, feel free to leave a like on the video and the discussion. Uh, leave a comment about what you guys think of the movie, if you guys seen it on Netflix already. And uh, feel free to subscribe and um, just l basically leave feedback and you know stay tuned for more videos like this in the future. I think next time I'm actually going to be reviewing some with someone else. Um, Black Mirror Season 4. So I want to be part of that one. You didn't tell me about that. Well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'll do some episodes, yeah.